Okay, so this is going to be a concise lecture on the gingivitis. First, the definition. So the term itself says gingiva means gum, and itis stands for the inflammation. So it is an inflammation and infection of the gingiva or gum. But one thing I would like to add here: it is a non-destructive inflammation of the gingiva. All right, it is a non-destructive inflammation. And here you can see in this image, I have also made a red line, and that area. is a inflamed area that is inflamed gum or inflamed gingiva okay now causes so the main and major cause of the gingivitis is a dental plaque a uh, dental plaque is uh, basically a sticky material which comprises of a bacterial biofilm some uh, some molecules like proteoglycans and also saliva and if you want to know more about dental plaque then you can watch my video on the tooth decay all right some other causes like ill fitting denture can also cause gingivitis now the risk factor so risk factors are equally important as the causes because they contribute equally osteoporosis age as the age advances persons are more prone to develop the gingivitis age osteoporosis low dental care utilization poor dental or poor oral hygiene aggressive brushing now this aggressive brushing damages the gingiva and that can uh, cause gingivitis mouth breathing during the sleep so some people have this tendency to breathe through the mouth during the sleep uh, because their nose are congested okay and generally our nose are supposed to breathe but sometimes uh, due to congestion of the nose some people breathe through the mouth during the sleep and that can cause gingivitis cigarette smoking genetic factors and some medication can also cause gingivitis so basically there is a drying of the mouth and uh, when there is a drying of the mouth there is no saliva and saliva is a protective material a protective fluid for the mouth because it flushes the teeth and it also has enzymes protective enzymes right so in the conditions when there is a drying of the mouth the person are more prone to develop gingivitis stress and mental causes stress depression can also contribute to the gingivitis and diabetes can also cause gingivitis now the signs and symptoms so signs and symptoms are very easy to remember because these are the same signs and symptoms of the inflammation so in the inflammation you know about rubber dollar collar and functional disease right so the same thing happens here there is a redness there is a pain there is a tenderness but one the two thing the two symptoms are different here and these are halitosis and hemorrhage so you remember h2 they these are two h one is a hemorrhage and another one is a halitosis now halitosis means bad odor or bad smell from the mouth and this is due to infection so here is a infection by the bacteria and this causes bad odor from the mouth and hemorrhage is due to the inflammation so when there is inflammation there is hyperemia of the blood there is a blood rush and the gingiva also becomes uh what we can say uh, fragile or or i would say uh, delicate so that's why there is a bleeding while brushing okay now complication so there can be a recurrence there can be a periodontitis and there can be abscess abscess formation right now here you can see i have made a red line once again i let me do it so this part is called periodontal membrane a membrane which anchors the tooth into the socket and inflammation from gingiva can spread to the periodontal membrane and that we call periodontitis and here is a image of the periodontitis some other uh, complications like trench mouth swollen lymph node and it might be associated due to premature birth and low birth weight okay now this trench mouth is also called acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis so that's why i have written down a n u g right a n u g it is a ulcerative gingivitis generally gingivitis is non destructive but what happened here okay i'm sorry for the inconvenience so generally gingivitis is non destructive but here in a n u g there can be a destructive process right the full form is acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis and here is the picture of anug 
now the diagnosis so diagnosis is done with the visual examination and there can be a radiographical examination also done so radiograph are also taken to probe the gingiva and there is some enzyme study which can also help like in the case of cardiac enzyme markers or in case of the renal function we uh, make a diagnosis with the enzymes so here and here also the same thing can be done and the enzyme in the saliva can be a marker of the gingivitis and these enzymes are AST, ALT, GGT, ALP and ACP. Now the prevention. So the prevention is always better than the cure and in the, in the oral uh, pathology I would say 90% of the oral pathology can be prevented just by maintaining a good oral hygiene and a good oral hygiene comprises of three things. First is a brushing, second, th second thing is a gargling after the meal and the third thing is a flushing. Okay, so if you do these three things, 90% of the dental pathologies can be prevented. Now the treatment. So treatment points basically two things, three things, basically three things. First is a treatment of the plaque. Then there is a maintenance of the oral hygiene. And the third treatment is a control of the infection, right? So for the removal of the plaque, you can do root planning, curettage and mouth washes. Then there is a maintenance of the dental hygiene. And the third thing is a uh, is a treatment of the infection, right? And for that, you can do uh, you can guide mouthwashes with the antibiotics, right? So it was a very simple topic, I guess. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you do like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can also share your views in the comment section, and you can also give me a thumbs up. Okay.